Hey, how's it going? We are in Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 through 10, um, which is not all of chapter 13. Here we go. And the dragon stood on the shore of the sea, and I saw a beast coming out of the sea. He had ten horns and seven heads, with ten crowns on his horns, and on each head a blasphemous name. The beast I saw resembled a leopard, but had feet like those of a bear, and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was astonished and followed the beast. Men worshipped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast, and they also worshipped the beast and asked, Who is like the beast? Who can make war against him? The beast was given a mouth to other proud words and blasphemies and to exercise his authority for forty-two months. He opened his mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. He was given power to make war against the saints and conquer them, and he was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the book of life, belonging to the Lamb that was slain from the creation of the world. He who has an ear, let him hear. If anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity he will go. If anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword he will be killed. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of the saints. All right, well, that doesn't sound very positive. So, the dragon is the devil. You know, that... That's We saw that clearly earlier. Now we have the beast. Who's the beast? Well, the beast, you know, um, he had ten horns, seven heads, ten crowns. Uh, you know, it seems to be a, maybe a, a series of kingdoms. Whenever you see this apocalyptic type language, like in Daniel, uh, you, you see like these things represent different kingdoms, different things that, that happen over time on the earth. So uh, probably several kingdoms. And then interestingly, one of the heads has a fatal looking wound, but that it healed up and the head is fine. So there you go. Uh, we see this 42 months again, three and a half years, 1260 days, all the same uh, period of time. Um, so the, the beast is given a mouth to other proud words and blasphemies and exercise his authority for 42 months. So not, you know, forever, three and a half years, the beast has this authority. So it's interesting stuff. I started looking up three and a half years, trying to figure out something. And uh, from Pearl Harbor to victory in Europe Day, World War II, 41 months. Now, I do think that when it says 42 months, don't be looking at history and finding things that are close or, you know, it, it, you want to have things line up completely, you know, otherwise you get into all this stuff where you're probably wrong and even stuff that might line up completely could very well be wrong too and not what this represents. Um, now, verses 8 through 10, we see that the worshipers of Jesus will not worship the beast. So verse 8, all the inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the book of life belonging to the lamb that was slain from the creation of the world. So there are those who belong to the lamb. They're not going to worship the beast. Um, and then, it, you know, it's a little harsh here. He who has an ear, let him hear. If anyone is to go into captiv captivity, into captivity he will go. If anyone is to be killed by the sword, with the sword he will be killed. So it's, it's basically saying here, there's not a lot of potential for escape. This is going to be a very, very bad time. You know, is this representative of the Great Tribulation? I don't know, but it's, it's, it's looking bad for those who uh, are unwilling to worship the beast. And it says, it finishes the section we read, finishes with, This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of the saints. So this is looking harsh. You've got the dragon 
standing by the sea. The beast comes up out of the sea. There's all kinds of blasphemy and evil and darkness that's going on. So this um, calls for patient endurance and faithfulness from God's people. There will be captivity. There will be death. And uh, it says here, you know, again, this calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of the saints. And I think we could use some uh, faithful endurance and patience, patient endurance and faithfulness uh, right now. So let's pray for the saints, which is just the believers in Jesus, to have patient endurance and faithfulness whenever they're facing any kind of a trial or difficulty. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we, as we read here in the book of Revelation, it looks like some pretty rough situations, uh, a lot of darkness, a lot of bad things happening. And it talks about having patient endurance and faithfulness in the midst of captivity and, and death. And so, Lord, help us in our lives to have patient endurance and faithfulness, especially if we're not suffering in these ways of being taken captive, imprisoned, uh, being killed. If we're not in the middle of those sorts of things, Lord, how much easier is it for us to have patient endurance and faithfulness? So let us have patient endurance and faithfulness. Build that in our hearts. Uh, we seek this and we ask for your guidance in it. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.